strength arises, we wait upon it, Lord, we will wait upon it, Lord, we will wait upon it, Lord. Strength arises, we wait upon it, Lord, we will wait upon it, Lord, we will wait upon it, Lord. Our God, you reign Sunday morning, the sun is shining, and we're going to worship the Lord this morning. But before we do that, let's get on to the announcements for the week. Um, there will be no youth service tonight, because Pastor Cliff is still recovering from his foot surgery. Um, and then don't forget the prayer clinic on Wednesday, the ladies meeting on Thursday on Zoom, and Kids Zone, which is happening as well. Yeah, come and join us. It's really great on a Wednesday evening. All right, then let's go into the birthdays for this week. Nothing. Oh, so we're not singing. Oh, that's a pity. Is there anybody here that's having a birthday or a celebration or something? Quentin? No. All right, well, then we're keeping it short and sweet this morning. Um, let's stand, let's pray, and then... It's going to worship this morning. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, Lord. We want to thank you for this beautiful morning that we can spend and we can take time in your presence. Lord, I pray that we go into worship now, that you will touch each and every single one of us, that you will fill our hearts, that you will comfort us when needed, that you will heal us when needed, and that you will take away our problems and our issues where needed as well. And as we go into worship, Lord, please take this up as an offering to you. And we pray this in your name. Amen. Let's worship together.
water you turn into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you There's none like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome in power our God Oh our God Our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome in power our God Oh 
This is the anarchy Lord, I'm 
This morning, I would like to thank the worship team for taking us through the worship. Hallelujah. I wish us to close our eyes so that we pray. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you this morning, Lord, and we humble ourselves. We surrender, Heavenly Father, our lives. We set aside our plans for your, your, your plan to come to pass. We pray in the name of Jesus that this morning, Lord, every heart be touched, every eyes be opened, every ear hears what you have to say, God. We pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I also would like, we can sit down. I would also like, would I like to take this opportunity and say that we wish um, our pastor, Pastor Cliff, a speedy recovery. We know God is doing wonderful. Um, you know, we know he's recovering. And we know God is healing him. It's only a matter of time. Hallelujah. Now, this morning, I want to go through the word of God uh, with a title that says, Falling for God's Plan. Hallelujah. Um, in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 15, the word of God says, um, the word of the Lord came to the prophet. (laughs) 
the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Jeremiah, who was a young, who was young, a young man at the time. God said to him, "Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you." Hallelujah. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. So now when we look at the, what the word is saying here, when God says, when I formed, when, before you were, you were formed, I knew you, you can see that in totality, God knows everything about you. Before you were even, you know, brought to this universe. Now, the word of God goes on to say, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nation. Meaning, the meaning of a consecration is dedication or set apart for a higher purpose. Now it means before we were conceived, God knew us and he already set us apart Thank you. God has got a purpose for you. It is a given purpose. It is a purpose that was there before you were conceived. I am here this morning to tell you that there are wonderful things. There are greater things that are awaiting to happen through your life. Because the word of God says so. You are set apart. You are consecrated. You are chosen by God. Now when we continue, God has already made a provision for us in this purpose. Sometimes we want to know that, okay, God says he has got a purpose with my life, but I don't have money. God has made a provision because you don't need to provide for his, his ministry. God provides you so that you can, his ministry can unfold in your, through your life. Now this morning, I'm saying this because I know that we serve a living God. We serve a God who doesn't lie. We serve a God who stays, he, 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 he operates according to his word. And whatever that he said, it shall come to pass. Your life is in God's hands. You were created by God for a purpose. Hallelujah. Can, I didn't, can you switch me off on this one? The mic. Hallelujah. Now, we carry on. God knew this day. He knew today we will be here. He knows your tomorrow. He knows your future. He knows my future. Nothing happens. It will take God by surprise. God will never be surprised. He's Every day a step ahead. Hallelujah. He is a step ahead. And you know all the stumbling blocks that we may come uh, through. God already has dealt with those. So there's no need for us to be scared. There's no need for us to be afraid. 
Hence his word says, be still and know that I am God. He is God. He is the creator of heaven and earth. He is the maker of everything. And nothing is impossible when we are with God. In the book of Jeremiah, Twenty-nine, verse eleven to fourteen. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for wel welfare and not evil, to give you future and hope. Ah, then you will call upon me and pray to me. I will hear you. This is a promise of God. He has got a better future for us. He has got a better life for us. There are better days ahead. We might be going through challenges. We might be going through ups and downs. But I'm here to tell you that through his word, God has really given, given us a guarantee. That he's got better days ahead for us. And he says we'll pray and we'll call upon him. And he will hear us. And believe me, he will answer our prayers. He knows the plans. Bigger and greater are his plans for our lives. If only we can just step into his presence, wait for him, be humble, be righteous, let God's will unfold, we will see wonderful things. By the way, I'm very much aware that sometimes we look into Christian life your life as a Christian, you look at it as, I need to pray to God only for my own things. But let me tell you something. There are greater missions which God has in your hands and through you. You remember Moses. He says to God, Lord, I'm stammering. I can't speak. And the worst thing is that you cannot send me back where? To Egypt. Because there in Egypt I will be killed. But God says, I will be with you. I will be with you. We must know, each, each and every one of us, we are, God is with us. And we, when, if God is with us, who can be against us? It's a guarantee that there's no battle that we cannot win. There's no mountain that cannot move because we are with God. Hallelujah. And we go on. The word of God says, you will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, I'll be found by you, declares the Lord. And I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all nations and all places where I have driven you, declares the Lord. Now God says, when we call upon him, we will seek him with all our hearts and we'll find him. So God is not far from us. Whatever that you do, know that God is not far from you. Make sure that you seek God with all your heart. And God can be found. He is there waiting for you. He's waiting for us to call upon him. He's waiting for us to humble ourselves. He's waiting for us to raise our arms and surrender. And he's there. And he will 
definitely welcome us back, back home. He is ready to take us back home. Like the prodigal father, when the son comes back home, he did not even worry about what he did. He did not worry about the fortune that he, he spent. All he was worried about is the life of the son. He is back home and he's safe. He was restored. God is willing and is ready to restore us. We need to be restored. We need to be restored. This morning we are praying for restoration. Because when you are restored, when you are back in your purpose, mountains will move. When you are back in your place, next to God, you will speak the word and the word will become alive. Because when we are back where we belong, in God's heart, nothing is impossible. Because the one that is with us is greater than the one who is in the world. Now, God here discloses his plan. God discloses the, the, the purpose for our lives. We were created. Little did we know who we are in God. But through his word, God discloses who we are. God discloses what we are capable of. Every one of us seated here this morning in this auditorium, you are capable of doing something greater than you can think. Because our God is greater than we can ever imagine, beyond imagination. I remember the other day when we were, we were having a youth uh, service, Pastor Cliff said to the young ones and said, who wants to perform miracles? Who wants to lay hands on the sick and they get healed? And I'm asking you this morning, who wants to lay hands on the sick and they get healed? It takes a prayer from a faithful heart to change a situation. It doesn't matter how bad it is. It doesn't matter how worse it is. It doesn't matter how big you think it is. It can only be big in our hearts, in our, in our minds, but not in the presence of God. Every challenge that we have, it becomes big because we make it big. If you worship your challenges, they become big. But if you worship God, then God becomes greater than the challenge. And you will go through it. Before you know it, you will be out of it. <coughs> this morning, I want to say to you, because I know that all of us seated here, we have got things that are troubling us. And sometimes we don't know how to get out of those situations. It is not for you to know. Because God already made a way. We just have to be humble. We just have to have faith in God. Because he made a way already for us to go through every situation. And the purpose was there before we were conceived. Your purpose was there before you were conceived. Hence God said, I knew you before you were conceived. And in this scripture, it says, I've got, there's a plan for you. If he knows you, he already made a plan for you. The only thing that you need to do, 
The only thing that we have to do is to surrender, is to go to him and say, God, I'm here. I raise my hand and I surrender because I want to discover who I am. I want to discover my purpose in you, Lord. When we give our life to Jesus, we, there was a bigger picture which God had. When you said to God, Lord, I give my life to you. God said, welcome, I've got a bigger picture for you. Let me disclose to you, I knew you. Let me, let me tell you that I've got a plan for you. When you walk through the door of this auditorium, you need to know that God has already made a way. He already knew that you would be here. And you needed to hear this word. That he has got a plan for you this morning. Every one of us seated here today, we need to raise our hands and say, God, let your plan unfold. I am ready to live in your will. I am ready to set aside everything and take up the yoke, take up the cross and live in your will. You will see that when you are in God's will, you don't see people the way you saw them when you were not in God's will. You see the image of God because we are the image of God. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you that good examples from the book of life. Adam was created to take care of the garden and the animals. In the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 15, that is where the Lord of God speaks and say, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work, to work it. When Adam was created, God already knew what Adam was there for. When Adam was created, he was already given into his purpose. When you and I were created, there was already a purpose for you. There was already a purpose for me waiting for us. I'm talking about God's purpose. When Eve was created, there was already a purpose. He was a, 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 you know, a, a, a suitable helper according to, to the word of God. We all have roles. We all have, you know, um, our plans are in the hands of the Lord. And without getting closer to him, we cannot discover his plans. And without getting closer to him, we will not be able to understand who we are in God. Now, we fit into our purpose from the minute we are born. Adam fitted into his purpose from the time he was created. Eve fitted into his purpose from the time she was created. Moses was born at the time when the boys were getting killed by the anointing that he carries through God's purpose, the enemy could not touch him or harm him. And sometimes we wonder, there was an accident which was almost, almost happened to me. And we wonder how we survived. We don't understand. And you, when you clearly look at that, you will see that, no, this must be God but I don't understand why this happened the way it happened. Because some things, we don't have to understand them. Because when God says, he says it, and when God says it is done, it is done. And no one can stop him. And no one can, 
you know, reverse what God has said. When you are set apart, when you are special according to God's word, no one can undo that. You are who God say you, who you, you are. You see, the world will try to make you something else because we are born into cultures and we will adapt to our cultures but the plan of God prevails all the time. You will find a way. You will find your way because God will open your eyes and you will see his will unfolding in your life. I wish to say in the book of Exodus chapter 30 verse 30 the word, the word of God says anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them so they may serve as priests. Anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them. Set them apart so that they may become what? Priest. And this morning when I say, the word of God says, we were consecrated. We were set apart. That was God's will unfolding. And that was God's plan for our lives. When I read this scripture, I can hear God giving an, an order because he already knew that Aaron has the ability to become a priest. Because God knows that he has already created a priest in him. God knows what he has created in you this morning. God knows who you are this morning. And when he calls upon you, don't reason with him, but give in. Give your life to him. Because he knows. Hallelujah. He knows who you are. He knows who you are. You know, it is amazing. I see my Bible is falling apart. The pages are falling apart. Maybe there's a helping hand that is taking the pages out. But I'll preach through it. Hallelujah. And now... The meaning of serve. We need to look at some words that we get in the Bible. There's a meaning. There's a word that we read all the time. The word serve. When you serve, it means you are, you are, you are working for someone. You are not working for yourself. So when Aaron gets anointed, he will serve as a priest. When you get anointed, you will serve in whichever position that you are called on. And who do you serve? God. Because we are called by him. And he called us for a purpose. So we live in a purpose. This morning, I'm talking about the purpose of God in our lives. Jesus was born into the purpose with challenges, pain, disgrace, and death. The good thing about you know, your purpose is that God doesn't have to alter your, 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 your plan. When Jesus was born, they were already on his path Challenges. He had to carry the cross. He had to grow through the pain. He had to be disgraced. But the will of God had to prevail. In your life, no matter what you're going through, the pain, disgrace, and maybe you're even facing the worst, but the will of God must prevail. If you have faith in God, it will prevail. I remember we read most of the time and the word, the word of God says, Jesus said, 
I wish this cup can pass. Because, but because, Father, it is your will. Let your will be done. How about that one? He knows this was not going to be easy. Your road as a, your road to, as a Christian doesn't have to be easy. But you need to come to a point where you accept and say, for as long as I please my Father, for as long as I do the will of God, let it be done. Because God is looking into your heart. And when he sees that you are putting him first, he becomes pleased. And this morning I'm saying to you, and this morning I'm saying, because the word of God says, we are chosen. We are special. And no matter what the challenges were, victory was certain. He went into the grave. But on the third day he came out. Death was defeated. He rose again on the third day. Pain ceased. Disgrace was changed to honor. And death to life. This is how great our God is. He changes the worst situation and he, make, he makes them the best. When the devil, when the devil wants to you know, disgrace you, God has got a greater plan to honor you. The word of God says, Stephen, when Stephen was stoned, he lifted his eyes and he saw heaven open. Because here on earth, there was so much pain for him. God made a way to comfort him. Because, because it was God's plan that was unfolding. God's plan will unfold in your life. And all you need to do is to raise your hands and acknowledge him. And pray to him and thank him. In the book of John, chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. Now, there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who came from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. This means that if we are with God, we can perform greater things. Because this man says, no one can perform the things that you are doing when God is not with him. This means that we, 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 things do not happen because we are wise, because we can do them. But they happen because there is God in our lives. Nothing is impossible with God. This morning I'm saying to you, nothing is impossible with God. Nicodemus came to Jesus to confirm it. That you are from God because we see what is happening. And I can tell you that most of you, if you look into your life, if you take a step, a step back, you will see that, you know what, for me to get where I am, it is because of God. There are situations you had, you, sometimes you gave in, you gave up, but you went through because there was God in your life. Even to this day, I'm telling you, going forward, remember, God is always there. We cannot worship situations, but we can only worship our living God, our Father in heaven. We can only say, let your will be done, Father. Because we know his will and his plan is good for us. It's an advantage for us.
And this morning I'm saying, this is the word of God. And if we believe it, and we have faith in it, we shall see it come to pass in our lives. Prison doors will be opened. <coughs> Patient will jump out of a hospital bed. People will be restored. They will be born again. Because miracles will start happening. Because it is God's plan that we perform miracles. It is God's plan that we set the captives free. And Jesus was set aside for the purpose of saving the world. And you are set aside for a purpose. And all of us, we need to pray to God that our purpose unfold. Through it all, God was with Jesus. He lived his life in God's will. Now the question this morning is, are we living go our lives in God's will? <coughs> are you living your life in God's will? If you, un you answer this question honestly, your life will change for good. And if you are not living your life according to God's will, the book of life is there. Your Bible is there to guide you to start doing it right. And when you do it right, you will be making God happy and your relationship with God will be stronger. And trust me, you will be the anointed one. In the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 6 to 7. Here Samuel was sent to go and anoint David. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stand here before the Lord. Sometimes when we see how people appear, the, the outside appearance, we believe that, oh, this one is anointed. And sometimes we look at other people and we think, ah, oh, no, this one can't be anointed. And this is what the prophet of God did. He said, this man, I believe that he's an anointed one. But what does God say? I'm speaking this way this morning because Sometimes we look at ourselves. You even maybe stand in the mirror and say, I mean, I can't be anointed. I don't see myself standing there praying for people. I don't see anyone getting killed because I prayed for him. Sometimes it's because when we grew up, we, are, we were told weird that we, we are not too good. Or maybe our friends told us we are not too good. But I'm here to tell you this morning, it doesn't matter what you look like. But the purpose of God is greater than whatever image that they painted about you. Now, but the Lord said, in verse 7, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at, 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 at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So if your heart is right with God, God is looking into your heart. God is looking at your heart. That's all you need. A good heart. Hallelujah. God is looking into your, our heart. 
And he knows our heart. Now, I want to say to you this morning, in closing, God is looking into your heart. It is important that we fix our hearts. It is very important that we fix our heart. And sometimes you might say, I don't know how do I, I get to fix my heart. But I'm telling you, the word of God is there to guide you. Because if there's anything that God is looking at, it's your heart. If we can get our heart right, if we can get our life right, put it on the right path, on the will of God, we must know God will be pleased with our lives. Now I'm going to ask a question this morning. Who doesn't want to please God? All of us seated here, every one of us, we want to please God. Every one of us seated here, we want good things. We want good things. I want good things for me. I want good things for my family. I want good things for my children. I want good things for my siblings. Nothing is impossible with God. Only if we go close to him. Because his word says, whatever that we do, if we, we seek him with all our hearts, we will find him. We want to find God this morning. The only way of finding God is for us to surrender. Surrender our lives. We go down on our knees. We swallow our pride. And we say, God, we know we wronged you. We know we departed from your presence. But right now we are coming back. We humble ourselves. Because we want to be close to God. We want to realize our purpose. Because there's one thing that I can tell you this morning. And there's one thing that I'm praying for. That I shouldn't leave. I shouldn't depart from this universe without fulfilling my purpose. And already, I'm looking into how old am I now? How much time have I wasted? I cannot afford to waste more time. Because trust me, people need you. There are people lying in hospital. They are waiting for someone to give them the word of hope. And you are the one who's going to do that through your purpose. You are going to restore those who are sick. You are going to restore those who have lost hope. Those orphans, they are waiting for you to come and reach out to them. Because all of us seated here, our purpose is to make this world better. Our purpose is to set the captives free. And it's only, it was that today. If you say to yourself, God, I avail myself. I wish us to pray. And pray for this purpose to come to pass. And I want us to say, wherever that we are going, God, make that place a better place through me. If I'm going to work tomorrow, I want to work, when I, 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 I go through that facility, that place must be a better place because I've walked in and the purpose of God start unfolding. And people will know like Nicodemus knew that, no, no, this one is with God. There is no way. This one is with God. When you stand up, when you walk, God is, will show up his purpose because of his purpose. So we are carriers of God's purpose. And all we need to do, we need to let it shine. We need to let it show. Let us all stand up. And I'm going to pray this morning.
We want to discover the God, the purpose. And we are going to pray this morning. Let's close our eyes. Heavenly Father, we are calling upon you this morning. Because we heard your word. We humble ourselves. And we pray for forgiveness of our sins, Lord. And we are praying because you said in your word, when we pray, Lord, when we seek you with all our hearts, you will be found. And I do believe that, Heavenly Father, this morning, through this word, Father, we have found you. Father, we have come before you. And this is where we want to be. We will never depart from your presence because we want, Heavenly Father, to have your purpose upon our lives. Heavenly Father, we pray that we serve you diligently. We serve you with all our hearts. We serve you with our lives. Heavenly Father, we pray that your will be done. And we pray this morning that as we walk out of this place, we just want to pray that your will be done, Heavenly Father. We pray and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Why don't we stay standing? <clears throat> Let's sing a final song for this morning.
His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may His praises go before you and behind you and beside you all around you, how we He is with you, He is with you in the morning, in the evening, in the morning, in the going, in the weeping, and rejoicing. He is for you, 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 He is for you. He is for you, He is for you, He is for you.